the Canadian province of British Columbia is renowned for its remarkable achievements in hydropower production, boasting awe-inspiring facilities. Yet within this rich history of power generation, a mega-project of unprecedented scale has emerged, earning the distinction of being the largest hydropower endeavor in the region since 1984. Known as the Site C Hydropower Project, it represents the province's latest response to the global call for renewable energy. This project serves as the most recent addition to British Columbia's impressive legacy of hydropower generation. Despite its potential benefits, Site C is enshrouded in controversy, leaving many to ponder. What lies at the heart of this ambitious hydropower venture? And what transformations will it bring to the region's power landscape? Furthermore, why does a renewable energy initiative generate such intense debate? The Site C Dam is being constructed on the Peace River by BC Hydro, 14 kilometers southwest of Fort St. John in northeastern British Columbia, Canada. Positioned around 80 kilometers downstream from the WAC Bennett Dam, upon its completion in 2025, it will rank as the fourth largest hydroelectric producer in British Columbia. It is expected to have a capacity of 1,100 megawatt and an expected annual output of 4,600 gigawatt hours of electricity. The project is anticipated to provide consistent power to approximately 450,000 households in British Columbia each year, ensuring a reliable, renewable, and cost-effective energy source for the province's residents. The Site C project will utilize stored water from the Williston Reservoir of the existing WAC Bennett Dam, avoiding the need for a separate water storage system and instead create an 83-kilometer-long reservoir with a total surface area of 9,330 hectares, including a controversial flooding of around 5,550 hectares of land. The Site C Clean Energy Hydroelectric Power Plant will feature six 183 megawatt vertical axis Francis turbines for energy creation, along with a water diversion system consisting of two tunnels, one with a diameter of 10 meters and a length of 700 meters, and the other with a length of 800 meters. Water will flow into the powerhouse through six penstocks, each 80 meters long and 10 meters wide, and the discharged water will be conveyed into the river through a tailray system. The project will include a 60 meter high and 1,050 meter long earth fill dam with a crest width of 10 meters. The dam's main spillway will feature seven gates and two coffer dams will be constructed on the north and south banks of the river. All of this will be supported by an 800 meter long and 70 meter high roller compacted concrete RCC, buttress, serving as the foundation for the powerhouse and spillways. The project is expected to create approximately 35,000 jobs during the development and construction period, along with an additional 10,000 direct construction positions. It is estimated to provide continuous power supply for a century and contribute around $160 million to the local GDP and approximately $3.2 billion to the provincial GDP. Despite being a significant leap forward in the region's power supply infrastructure, the Site C project has been marred by controversies that pose a threat to its construction. Initially conceived in the 1970s, the project encountered a barrage of issues and questions, with many expressing apprehensions regarding its environmental impact. Notably, between 1981 and 1983, the British Columbia Utilities Commission rejected the Site C project citing its failure to account for energy prices and lack of reliance on statistically significant historical behavior patterns. However, in 2010, the project gained an exemption with the passage of the Clean Energy Act. And in 2014, it received approval from federal and provincial authorities following a three-year environmental review, leading to construction commencement in 2015. As of February 2021, the estimated cost of the project stands at approximately $16 billion. It faced further controversies as questions arose about its planned flooding of agricultural land, potential damage to the local environment, high construction costs, alternative options, and the uncertainty surrounding future electricity prices and demand in the province. Subsequently, legal challenges to the dam were initiated by Treaty 8 First Nations and local landowners. These claims were later dismissed by the Federal Court of Appeals, permitting the dam's construction to proceed. In May 2016, the project encountered opposition from more than 200 scholars and the Royal Society of Canada. They voiced their concerns to the federal Liberal government, highlighting deficiencies in the regulatory review process and the project's environmental assessment. Despite the strong objections from the public, on December 11, 2017, the government announced its decision to continue with the construction of Site C. 
they justified this decision by emphasizing that any other course of action would lead to an immediate, unavoidable, and crippling debt of $4 billion for British Columbians, with no tangible benefits to show for it. They further explained that it would result in increased utility rates or reduced funding for vital services such as schools, hospitals, and critical infrastructure. In their public address, they stated, Although Site C is not the project we would have preferred or initiated, it must be completed. Now, with the government's resolve behind it, the project is expected to commence supplying power in 2024. With completion estimated around 2025, the project is anticipated to prevent the emission of approximately 30 to 70 million metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, positioning it as a significant step in the battle against pollution, climate change, and global warming. Additionally, discussions have taken place with the Canadian government in Ottawa about transferring site sea power between BC and Alberta. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau expressed his support, saying, I think anything we can work on interprovincially or nationally to reduce emissions, focusing on hydroelectricity and transitioning away from coal and natural gas where possible, is beneficial for the country. It's positive for our emissions profile and our economic development. Despite government and public support, the project still faces challenges. In August 2023, the primary contractor responsible for building the hydroelectric dam project was fined $1.1 million for discharging contaminated drainage water into the Pisa River. This pollution was discovered by federal agency enforcement officers, who claimed that in 2018, the contractor discharged 3,300 cubic meters of drainage water with a high concentration of metals into the Peace River due to the inadequate capacity of their water treatment system. The Peace River Hydro Partners admitted guilt in court, citing a direct violation of the Federal Fisheries Act. In addition to these controversies, the project encounters logistical challenges and harsh weather conditions, with many concerned about BC Hydro's limited transmission capacity to distribute the generated energy where needed. This is because there is now a surge in demand from industry for large amounts of power as they try to decarbonize their industries and focus on renewable energy. While Site C's energy generation holds the potential to drive these industries forward in theory, it necessitates a significant overhaul of BC Hydro's energy transmission networks. Currently, the existing transmission capacity on the north coast serves the committed load, leaving no room for the additional load from Site C. The Site C dam is nearly 90% finished, and the overall project has reached a completion rate of over 70%. As it approaches its final stages, the region can be confident in having a power supply capable of meeting the needs of both the current population and the anticipated population for years to come.